Hello MathO33 students. In this tutorial I'm going to be guiding you through step two of the Lining Things Up project. In particular we're going to use Excel to create a scattergram of our data, label that scattergram appropriately, and then add a trend line that will be our linear regression model and its R squared value. Okay so let me go back to Excel and I want to highlight my round trip distances and my total price. So I'm going to go here and left click on cell C1 but I hold down my left mouse button and drag it down and to the right and then I can lift up on the mouse button and it has selected or highlighted all of the data from the round trip distance and the total price columns. And I don't really want the whole columns I just want the data from them and I've done that. So now I need to go to insert the insert ribbon and there are a lot of different options in here, but we are interested in this middle section where it talks about charts because Excel calls graphs charts. Don't ask me why. All right, so I want to click on this guy right here, which is a scatter chart options. And there are a lot of different scatter chart, op chart options, most of which we don't want. We want the top left corner. That's the only one we want, in fact. So click on the top left corner and it's created a scatter plot. Now all we have to do is adjust the scatter plot to our liking and we'll be set. Now I can move the scatter plot around. If I left click on the scatter plot and shift it over, I can lift up my mouse button and there it is, it's moved. I can move it over here. I can move it back. Right, so that's how you can move graphs to wherever you want them in the spreadsheet. All right, now I also want to edit this, but before I do that, I want you to notice that there are a couple of things up here called the design and format tools. These are two different ribbons that are available for modifying charts. If I click off of the chart, they disappear. But if I click back on the chart, they'll reappear. So if ever you accidentally click somewhere, it's okay. You can just click back on the graph and they will reappear. Also notice, by the way, that it highlights for you where it's getting the data from. So the purple and the blue boxes are where the data are coming from for the scatter plot. All right, now I'm gonna go to design and I wanna edit a few things. First of all, I'm gonna change my color scheme. Now you can change your color scheme to whatever makes you happy. It starts off a default at the top and you can kind of play around with different colors. Um, you can pick green, you can pick orange, gray if you feel drab that day. I'm gonna pick green right there. And then also in here, there's a chart styles menu that's pretty quick and you can choose different chart styles. There's one with uh, sort of diagonal lines really finely drawn or there's ones with circles as your dots. It has black background, green background. Now notice if I had chosen a different color scheme like orange, it'd make it, whoa, very bright, but an orange background and so on. I wouldn't recommend that if you're having to print it out or anything, but you know, it's pretty to look at. It keeps you awake, I suppose. All right, so I'm gonna stick with my green color scheme, but I do not want that background because that's just too bright. I'm gonna go with the regular one right here. All right, now I wanna add chart elements in the top left corner. So I'm gonna click on that axis titles, there's primary horizontals. I'm going to click that and it adds a horizontal axis title and you can type what that is. It was round trip distance and I'm going to put parentheses and give its unit which was miles, enter. And there it is, round trip distance. And then I'm going to click on axis titles again, add chart element, axis titles, vertical, primary vertical, and there it is right there. And if I just start typing, which is ticket price in dollars, enter, and it changes it. Now I want these two titles to be bold. So I'm gonna click on them, select it. And you can see that it has a selection box. Then I can go to the home screen or home ribbon and click B for bold and it makes it bold. Now I'll do it to the other one. Click on it, you can see it's selected. There's a little box around it. Control B or bold right here will make it bold. Now up here at the total price, I need to change it. You can click on it once and just start typing, right? Or you can click on it twice and edit individually each letter. So I'm just gonna click on it once and that makes it kind of a solid line box and I'll just start typing. Airfare, and you can see that it starts showing up up here in the function bar. Airfare versus ticket price, enter, and there it is. The other option is to go in here and highlight the whole thing and then type it. Airfare versus ticket price. Enter. Oop, not enter. Just click off of it. There you go. 
And then I want to make that bold as well. So I'm going to click on it so it's selected again with that solid box and control B and it's bold. Great. Now I have my titles, appropriate labels for my axes. Everything's good. Chart titles up here, axes labels over here. Now I need to add a trend line. So I'm going to right click on any one of the dots and add trend line. All right, now in the newer system, there becomes a menu over here where you get to format the trend line. Whoop, let me come back. There we go. So you have a whole bunch of options when you're trying to format your trend line. Do, what kind of trend line do you want? Do you want linear, et cetera, et cetera, exponential? In our course, we're only working with linear. Now, if you're on an older version of Excel, the same options appear to you, but they'll be in a little dialog box, like a little gray box in Excel. But in the new Excel, it kind of shows up over here, covering over a portion of your Excel spreadsheet. That's okay, it'll disappear when you're done with it. You wanna click down here, not only want linear selected, but you want display equation and display R squared selected. And then you're all set. Now you can close this by clicking on the little X up here, and that'll close it down. Now you can move this around, kind of shift this over. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm moving it so that, I, well, I have the trend line label selected. And then I kind of make it so that my mouse is hovering on the solid line for the box. And I hold my left mouse button down and then I'm dragging it over. And that makes it away, takes it away from the trend line and makes it so it's not blocking the points. Then I can hit control B again and make it bold. And you can shift it wherever you want, right down here. Now, if you're wondering about why is that a dotted line instead of a solid line, it's no big deal if it is a dotted line or a solid line. But if you want to modify it, you can click on, oops, not that one, although that would work eventually as well. So you can right click on the line and click format trend line and that menu will pop back up. And what you want to do is mess around with the little paint bucket here. And over here, instead of dash type, you can select a solid line if you so desire. You could change its color if you want. You can make it so that the line is orange or blue or whatever you like. While we're on the subject, you could make it so that the font here is blue, right? So the font for that entire label box will then match your line and so on and so on. All right, so the thing about Excel is that you can mess around for literally hours changing the background to the box that forms your graph, changing the background to the big chart, changing your font colors, your font sizes, your font types, changing the widths of your lines, the darkness of your lines. It literally has a way to modify almost everything. So by doing this this way, we've just done a very quick run through how to make a quick chart, how to add my trend line and change the colors and make it solid if you so desire. But that is not necessary. If you wanna just leave them as gray and leave the line as dot, da, dashed slash dotted, that's fine too. It's no big deal. All right, we are all done with that. We have created our trend line and we have added our R squared value. So we're finished with that portion. So I'll see you back in the next tutorial for how to um, deal with the analysis portion. So I'll see you then.